Another top tip from Steamhead, it's not a good idea to deliberately glue your fingers together with superglue as an experiment, then get bored with trying to soak them apart and decide to use a scalpel to cut them apart. Don't try this at home, it's not a good idea. I've just finished putting together a load more cable clips for the heraldic clarion door horn. She's proving very well, I'm having to make more because I'm selling so many of them. The heraldic clarin door horn is a beautiful wooden cabinet with a lovely brass horn, brass effect horn, that actually works. It replaces a boring battery powered doorbell, it runs on batteries itself, but it uses a working air horn to let you know when someone's at the door. It connects to an existing doorbell button with beautiful copper colour cable um, and you can select how long a piece of cable you want and how many clips you want. You join it to your existing doorbell switch with a beautiful little wooden junction box as well. The perfect adornment for every home. Excellent. And remember this and loads of other products can be found by visiting my sh online shop at steamhead.co.uk. Loads of different things. Lots and lots of potential presents for people as well. Here's my design for a steampunk picture frame and it's got ball chain, it's got gears and wheels and pulleys and gauges with real glass fronts and real copper pipe and clamshell lights, it's got so many things and then you come to this corner prior to getting a 3D printer I really didn't have any other way of doing a piston and a boiler but now I'm going to improve it, a 3D version. Starting off, this is the drawing I took from the original design for the picture frame. I would say I could get all the measurements from it to re recreate it in the 3D Builder software, which is absolutely incredible. Here I'm just trying to add the pipes to the top of the boiler. You just create, you drop in all sorts of different shapes. There's about six or seven to choose from, and you can make anything. They're very, very cleverly designed. So this is like a donut shape, and I can't remember what it's called. I just cut it into a quarter, cut the rest off, and then attaching two cylinders to it, and there you go. It's so simple. And you can adjust very precisely individual measurements by typing in actual millimetre values uh, in, the boxes at the, in the box at the bottom, which comes up whenever you select an object. Incredible. So I've sliced it in half. Originally I started with a... 3D, full 3D version. I've squashed it a bit as well because the picture frame doesn't want to be too high. And now I'm turning it over so it can lie flat and print properly on the um, 3D printer. So that's that. Absolutely incredible. This is the slicer software that came with the 3D printer. So I'm going to drop the design into that. 
and then set a few preferences and save it as a g-code file that the 3D printer understands. Start preheating it so the bed of the machine goes to 60 degrees and the nozzle, the extruding nozzle is at 215. There's the little memory card. It's just incredible how much, how much memory you can fit on such a small space. Choose what file to print and it's off. we go. Will you look at that? That's come out really nicely. That looks amazing. It's got the lines on. I don't know whether you can see the lines catching the light, but I don't think that matters. This bit will peel off. That's the base that it prints to support everything. I'll take that off and then we'll see what it looks like. So there's the original 2D one that was laser cut and painted. So the next job is to spray it, spray it copper and see what it looks like. And I'm very pleased with that. That's come out really nicely. I've run out of copper paint but looking at the design of the frame I reckon it will look really good with brass. I think the copper might have been a bit much. So here we go. Hmm. You can really clearly see the lines where it's printed, but well, let's see what it looks like when it's dry. I need to finish off all these cable clips for the copper colour cable for the heraldic clarion door horn. Next job is to make a sticky, cut a sticky foam pad to fit on the back of each one. I've been thinking about this like you do when you're trying to go to sleep at night, thinking how can I cut this foam tape into regular same length pieces so I've created another jig, look at that two little foam pads and a bent piece of cardboard stuck onto the side of a pair of scissor things perfect! <laughs> thirty-two lovely having decided to replace the pop a cylinder with 3D printed things, it seemed ever such a shame after the palaver I went to to get the scan of this into the computer, the little clamshell lights, why not replace these original, again, 2D laser cut clam lamps with 3D printed ones. So, with a little judicial use of the pliers, and see how well it's been glued together, Excellent. So, get on the computer and turn that pipe clip and clamshell lamp into a, a beautiful 3D printed one. Now here's the drawing, all the drawings for the picture frame. What I want is one of those little clamps I was just talking about. So let's go down to here. Here we are. Get one of them and control C. Control V. Right, we don't need any of that now. Now, top tip here, I was amazed at this. If I fill this, make it all black like that, then save it as G, bing, and call it, um, right, clam shell. And also save this just so I keep up to date with what's going on. Now, the clever thing is insert add an image that's where it gets quite clever if you add an image like this it will try and sort out what you want it will try and turn a 2d image into a 3d object if you invert it you then get a thing that's actually the right shape let's import image right so now we've got a 3D version of this. Problem is I found it loses all the size and the dimensions so I will get an accurate measurement from the, the total width of it for reference and I'll actually try and draw it away from the drawing so I can actually see what I'm doing from that point to that point. There we are 18.972. Width of that 18.972 it's a day there you go it's reduced it down to the perfect thickness width length whatever now I cut the original out of five millimeter 
acrylic. So, zoom in again. So what I want to do now is unlock the padlock and go to uh, Z, which is up, right, upwards. Click on Z and make that 5. And will you look at that? Isn't that amazing? Right, I've imported the model of the clamshell. I can't remember why it had a whole thing. I know there was a very good reason for it. Obviously, I need to slice that in half. So let's use the slicing, splitting tool. Look at that. It's worked out. We want exactly half of it. How fabulous. You can decide whether you want the top or the bottom or both, which again is really good. It's complicated. I just want the top. Let's split that. It'll probably take quite a while. No, no, brilliant. There we are. Then I want to change some angles, the angle of the dangle. So what I'll do, the other thing, there's three tools with each of these, with, with each object you can use. There's the moving one, which is just dragging it around like that. There's the rotating one. Let's move this into the centre so you can see what's actually going on. Now, I can never, I've learnt which your is, but it's roll. Whichever one you click on it, turns green. Oh, now I want that 90 interesting. degrees. I've ended you know up, let's up move this out of the way, I've ended up adding a cylinder because I've got square bits here and round bits here and if I put that cylinder up to there, just touch it like that, that looks fine. Like that. And then I can bring this down, and this is this is just where it gets amazing. Well, that's the climatic revelator telling me that the pressure is falling. So I'm happy with that. Now, the, one of the most amazing things is I can now merge these two shapes. Then I'll go to save as, but this time as an STL, right, which has got a different icon, load model. Developing, oh here we are, open that, with a bit of luck, no logic behind the names I call things. Right, there it is, so it it's going to take 12 minutes and use half a metre of the 2 gram fibre, no, half a metre of it, which is 2 grams. Right, then we go to File, Save G-Code. Aha, one pile of beans later, and it's printed, I forgot how small it was. How long did that take? 12 minutes. Okie dokie. Here's a bracket. I managed to snap the old fashioned laser cut clamshell effect off. So I've got that. And here's the 3D printed one. So I'm going to glue that onto there. Preferably without gluing any part of myself to it after the experience a few days ago. Uh, is it? Oh no, no, we've got super glue. There we are. It's all super. Is that? If you want super glue to set quickly, you hurr on it because super glue is actually set off by moisture. Previously, I was using some of this amazing holographic tape um, to simulate fire within the boiler, but. It always looks a bit bright to me, it was the brightest thing on it. So what I just tried doing, less is more and all that, is with a marker to take out most of it so it looks like coals and smoke and things. That's it, so you can see it looks so much more realistic. Just the odd little bit of holographic flame thing appearing and it really does make it look so much better. Round three. The last version also distorted, so this time I've made this part of it two millimetres thick rather than the one millimetre to give it a little bit more stability. So let's try that. Excellent. I'm really happy with that. I've glued the new one onto the lampshade onto the little bracket. It fits over perfectly. Put my hand in the way to get a bit of shadow. You can see that it's going to look really nice. I'm happy with that. It doesn't go over the picture too much, and it just gives it another bit of depth. 3D. So I'll stick the other ones together and print two more off, and then spray them all 
brass and we'll see what happens. Well, I am very happy with that. You think that the copper on its replaced was just 2D with really bright flames. I mean, oh, that really does look like a fire with sort of little bits of flame crackling up. And the fact that it is 3D. Oh, fabulous. They just look so nice. They really do look nice. Very pleased with that. I think I might need to do a nice moving video of it. Ironing? I don't believe it. Heavens to Betsy, we don't do ironing in this house. But needs must when the devil arrives. When you need something nice to sit a lovely steampunk picture frame on. And the only thing you've got is a beautiful hand embroidered thing that's covered in creases then you have to find the iron it's quite satisfying in very very small doses trying to photograph shiny intricate things is really quite difficult in the end I gave up trying to use the large lamp because that was just lighting everything up I'm using two of these little IKEA ones having fiddled around probably pretty unwisely so with the camera exposure settings Remember, as always, this and many other delightful items can be purchased at my online shop, steamhead.co.uk. If you do purchase one of these beautiful frames running up to Christmas and send me uh, a picture of yourself, whatever picture you'd like to fit in it, I will put it through a filter to get it looking really old fashioned, print it out, and when you receive the frame, it will have your picture within it. What a great gift! That is again steamhead.co.uk. Thank you very much.